Tomcat's on a roll this weekend. <clears throat> He's already got two mice under his belt for the season. And he's hunting for some more. Well, hello everybody. We are going to start working on the engine. I'm working on some videos from my other channel. Uh, before we start getting into the disassembly of what we need to do. <clears throat> like I said, the video series on my other channel is going to cover basically everything that I could possibly think of to help you guys troubleshoot your ATV. But one of the things we need to do right now is clean the engine block. So I got some Lysol. Well, actually it's not Lysol anymore. It's empty. And no, I didn't drink it. It's just full of water. I'm just going to spray it down. Wipe it down by hand. Try to get as much as that caked on dirt off as we possibly can. Today where I am is family day, which is supposed to be a day that Alberta has a holiday that you spend time with your family and do something fun. <clears throat> I have no family, so I'm going to hang out in the garage, work on my ATV. Let's get started. Oh, this is where the fun begins. <clears throat> Focus, focus. This wire on this temperature sender on the head is wearing through, so that's going to be an issue. Well, of course, for the old engine outside, the problem is it's buried in the corner somewhere. I can't remember where I put them when I cleaned up the shed last spring. Definitely behind the fenders in a box somewhere. That's the box I need right there. There's lots of goodies inside here. So wet clutch, timing chain guides. It's another cylinder, there's a head. To my dismay, that one there is the same condition. So just gonna have to roll with it, it still works. So spend your money on a new sensor. If you look inside here, in those springs, you can see the valve seals that we're going to be changing out, not in this head, but on that one. Also, this U-joint is quite a bit better than the one on here. This one here got a lot of play, so save myself some money. We're going to take this one out, put it in there. This is the interesting part. Here's the camshaft. This is the camshaft sprocket, but there's no timing marks whatsoever. Even on the chain, usually a chain will have a mark or like a different colored link that you can use for timing. No, it's like that on both sides, which I find very odd. When we get to that point, you're gonna have to look in the service manual and see exactly how to properly time it. But I think if you have the timing mark down below at uh, top dead center and your camshaft set at top dead center, you're probably right on the money for timing. That's my guess, but I'm gonna have to read the service manual and go from there. First off, how is everybody doing today? Tomorrow we're gonna get back outside in the garage to continue working on the motor. Um, try to figure out if there's any timing marks and then start disassembling it so we can rebuild it and reassemble it. But I got a new toy in the mail, something totally cool that we're gonna do a bunch of testing on because I think personally, it's the way of the future. It's not new technology, but it's being utilized more and more now. What we got here on my table is a batteryless jump starter. And what I'm doing is that I'm charging it off of my car rover um, boost pack. So what happens is, is that this is a capacitor. There's no batteries in it. So in my jump starter videos, when people have commented on, you know, it's not designed to power anything, it's only designed to give quick bursts of power. Well, 
they don't know what they're talking about because a batteryless jump starter is designed for that purpose. Unlike the battery ones which they were referring to. The best part about this is is that if I hook this up to a battery with the cables this will charge in a matter of minutes. Where these you can't because there's a risk of blowing up so they must be charged and it takes about eight hours. Where this even charged with the USB cable at 1.5 amps this will take about 20 minutes to charge and it's fully charged. One of the cool things about these little batteryless jump starters as well is the fact that if your battery doesn't have enough juice to turn it over and this is dead, it will take whatever power is left in the battery to charge it to boost your vehicle. It's not affected by cold, it's not affected by heat unlike the battery powered jump starters. And Tomcat is being a little bit crazy tonight. What are you doing, buddy? Why are you so hyper now, hey? You trying to bite me? Tomcat, you're so funny. So on my second channel, I'm not sure if this will be showing up yet or not, but this will show up on my second channel as a review. But these came in the mail today, and these are Chinese end mills. And I'm gonna show you just how crappy these are. So these were like 12 bucks for all these, but look how shitty that is. That's hardly even a cutting surface there. This thing is going to blow up and chip and shatter in a matter of minutes. Look at that, almost charged, almost charged. There we are, fully charged, and I don't know if this thing's lying or not, but if it's accurate, I use about six or seven percent of power to fully charge this. I think right now it's motherfucking beer time. We got some Mad Jack. Premium hard root beer, I like this stuff. This stuff is actually really good. All right, cheers everybody, motherfucking beer time. Another short video. We got a lot of things to get done in a very short time. So tomorrow we're gonna get up early, start getting some things done, and continue on with the Articat project. So if you guys have any questions or comments, post them below. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys for watching.